Hi everyone, Sandra Duran Wilson here and welcome to this week's Mixed Media Monday. Every week I bring you mixed media techniques, inspiration, and studio tips. Thanks for joining me this week. Last week we created our paper clay shapes and I want to share with you some different ways to finish the painting on these, whether it's with paint or patinas or waxes, all kinds of things you can do with these. So I am going to begin with this one from last week. And I'm going to come in with, this is a deco art textured paint. If I can get it open, there we go. It's a really thick, heavy metallic paint. But I want to use it thin. So you see, I just barely dipped my brush in there. Let me move this out of the way. And you see how it's kind of sitting on the surface. Now remember, this clay is rehydratable, meaning if I get it too wet, it's going to get soft again. So I'm going to use this thick paint and just really brush it down in. And I, I wanted to use this thick paint because I wanted to kind of go into the recesses. And I'll be showing you thin paint also. But let me just pick this up. Depending on how much I take off, I can really see the finer details in this piece that weren't necessarily so obvious when it was all just white clay. And it's got a little bit of a, a metallic luster to it. Now, if you've been watching for a while, you know that I love to work in layers. And I think you get the, the most depth and richness with color when you build up your layers. So I'm going to take and wipe off some of that paint from the, from the texture on the surface. And I'm going to let this dry. And then I can add another layer. But isn't that beautiful? It almost reminds me of like an ivory coming through carving. So that's the first step. Now, this one, I'm going to use Lumiere paints. And these paints are made to work with fabrics and even paper clay. So let's try this kind of beautiful halo pink, it's called. And it's one of my favorite colors. And I'm just going to, oops, squeeze it out onto there. And my brush is dry, and I'm just going to do as I did before with that thick paint. Just pick up that little bit. And when you're working with these pieces, you're going to be adding to something. You want to make sure you get all of your edges painted. I'm not going to worry about it so much at the moment, but that is something you want to pay attention to. Isn't that a beautiful color? What I like about it is that it reflects two different colors, really. If you see it in the edges, in those recesses, it appears to be a darker color, kind of that pink. And on the flat surfaces, depending on how the light hits it, it's more of a gold. So beautiful paints for working with paper clay. Now there's another one that I'm going to kind of show you how I got some of this. This is painted first, and then I used some of Seth's uh, embossing powders on top of it. But I want to get this going because this is going to be really wet. And I'm going to need to have it dry. So here's the piece with the beads in it. And this is a high flow phthalo green blue shade from Golden. And I don't know if you can see that. Yeah, probably. But 
because it didn't have any kind of seal on it, it's really getting um, dark in here because my brush was very wet and this paint is very low viscosity, meaning very fluid. So I'll show you again over here. See, it just kind of flows down into that clay. And I want to keep it really um, diluted, so I'm going to spray a little water on. There we go. That's another way you can control the uh, transparency of your paint. And remember, this is on top of the cardboard, so I'm getting a few different effects of how it's getting absorbed into the clay and the paper. So I'm going to need to let that dry. And I want to show you the embossing. So let me get the, this is the one that had the little roller on the top. And I'm going to see if this is dry enough. I think so. And I'm just going to take on the top. And this color is called Sea of Tranquility. And I'm going to sprinkle this on top. And I can take a, a little brush and brush some of that out. I wasn't paying too much attention to detail on this, but if I wanted to add a little more, I could come back in. There we go. And then you remember what I did with these. I just heated it with the heat gun. Let me put this back in the bottle before I put the heat gun over here and have the powder go everywhere. not sticking on quite as well. I could have used, um, I'll show you one other quick way to, to get it on there and have it stay a little better. You could use a stamp. But I just wanted to give you that idea. I'm going to show you one other thing. Actually, I kind of like it. It's getting a little rustic looking. And as I emboss it, it's going to stay, it's going to act like, um, like this. This one I did with a lot of it. So we can compare the two. So here's with a lot of the embossing powder, and here's with just a little. And this one, I did the same thing. I used the brush tool with the embossing powder, and I just went around and did that. Now the other piece is, these are called metallic luster creams. These are by Deco Art also. And they have this beautiful, rich kind of wax feel to them. However, if they dry out, you can simply um, rehydrate them with some water. And you see, you just kind of rub it on. And you can build up these, these layers of color. And one of the nice parts about this is that it's water soluble. So you can put a little uh, water on a paper towel, come back, 
and rub some off. So you get these nice layers. It comes in lots of different colors. And let's see if I can get just a little touch of this green on the top. Okay, this one, it had kind of dried out and I sprayed a little bit of water so you can see it comes right back. And I'm just tapping it on my finger and just lightly rubbing it over the top so it's just sitting up on the surface of that design. Now that color is pretty similar to the blue, so I'm going to come back in here, use a different finger, pick up some of the gold. Actually that color is called orange flicker. And do you see how beautiful you can get these nice layers of color? Very rich. You can do the same thing without putting any paint. I can put a lot of it onto here. This is the orange flicker. And then just come back in with my brush and brush it. And then when that dries, I can come back in with a different color on top, like the green. And it'll really accentuate that pattern. So these are a few different ways to get patinas, to get colors. And one of the other things I just want to talk about before we go is sealing these, because it is important to finish them since they do rehydrate. And when I have finished what I want to put on them, I will take a matte medium or a gloss medium, depending on you know, the sheen I want, and I will make sure that I seal both sides. Then they're going to not warp or go anywhere, and then as I cut them up or add them to my pieces, I don't have to worry about that. So make sure you seal them. And you, even after you seal them, you could keep building layers of color but you want to make sure you seal them. So thanks for joining me this week. And if you like the video, click like, share it, and share your work. Post any questions you might have, and I'll see you next week. Join the community and share your creations on social. Use the hashtag Mixed Media Soul Sparks. I look forward to seeing your comments in the comment section.